does it feel? You are back on Broadway. Yes. Jeremy Pope. Uh, actor, singer, you are one of the six people who has been in the history of the Tony Awards be nominated in two categories for two different performances during the same year in 2019. <laughs> okay, and these performances were not just any performances, but you were the back sister in the reading role. That's what you won for Farus Jonathan Young in Choir Boy, that I saw was amazing, and Best Actor in a Feature Role in a Musical for your role as Eddie Kendrick in Ain't Too Proud. So, wonderful, thank you for being here, and tell me how this role came about. And yeah. um, I mean, I was itching to get back to Broadway. Mm -hmm. I miss Broadway, Broadway <laughs> is my home. Um, and has been for so many years. So um, while those seasons were great and very hard to do two shows at once, I knew it had to be the right thing. Yeah. Um, and collaboration came. Um, Kwame, Kwaramar, director, and Paul Bettany were attached. And I knew that I wanted to, 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 to jump along on this journey. We were going to take it to London, make the movie, and then come back to Broadway. And I think it's a beautiful play that explores these two artists who contributed so much to the arts and to our world as far as how we see it, Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat. Um, and I was just, I, I just wanted to investigate the souls and the heart of, of Basquiat. And an opportunity to do that felt very special. So that's why I said yes. Right now, it's the perfect moment for this play on Broadway because the Basquiat exhibition is on right. it's and it's like been organized by his two sisters, so it's a very comprehensive exhibition. Yeah. So this is really the moment for these iconic people. How does it feel to play such a, a hero? He was a hero. And would I so young? Mm, yeah. And left so much to the world right. in that little time. Right, right. I think what we're witnessing right now is where, you know, he did. I do believe he, you know, you know, unfortunately he left this earth too soon. But he gave us so much while he was here, and that's a gift. And I love that we are taking opportunities to celebrate that and uplift that and encourage that because um, we never know what legacy we will leave behind mm -hmm. and I think about myself as an artist like the things that I'm doing you pray and you believe that you hope that you're sowing the seed for something bigger and greater than yourself um, that will outlive and inspire a generation and Basquiat is a huge inspiration it's a huge reminder to be yourself authentic and truth he was a black artist at a time you know, making space in this white industry of artists and, and, and art dealers. And they saw him and he took with it and ran. He ran like hell and he created and he created and he created. Um, and I think that's very beautiful. I love that his family has put together an exhibit that celebrates him as an artist, but just him as a brother, as a son, as a, as a human. Um, because these giants, the Andy Warhols, the Basquiat, these celebrities, people that we, we love and that have contributed so much, there is a soul and there is a heart and there is a fragile, usually individual who's, who's in there. So I love that the world is continuing to unpack that and uplift that. Um, so it does feel very, very timely that we are here um, bringing it to Broadway at this time. And I'm, I'm just super excited to bring it back to, or to bring it to uh, Samuel J. Freeman, MTC, where I have my Broadway debut. Um, you know, and Paul gets to now have his Broadway debut there. So it just, it feels very life affirming, very meant to be. How is it the interaction between uh, you and Paul in this uh, collaboration? Right. <laughs> yeah, I know really, a true collaboration. It's been a gift, I love that man so much. He will be in my life forever. Um, I didn't know him before personally, and we didn't chemistry read or anything, we just, we just got in a room together and begin to, to vibe and to collaborate. And he's so giving. So while this has been a unique experience to go from London to a Moody and now to Broadway, mm -hmm. a year and some change living in the soul and the heart of these individuals, I feel very free. I feel very protected by him. I feel very safe. Um, and it's fun. It makes it fun. Eight shows a week is very hard. Um, 
and he makes it fun. He makes it exciting. I love looking across the room and knowing I have a, a sparring partner who's going to continue to explore and play and find. Um, so, you know, while this is the last leg of our tour, if you will, I know it's going to be a very special one to bring this back to New York City, stomping grounds for these two giants. You know, this is where they, they, they rose and they found themselves. So it's, it, it, it makes sense that we're here. Absolutely. And how does it feel to be on Broadway, not in a musical? <laughs> You asked the right question. <laughs> it feels amazing. Let me tell you, did not have to worry about warming up vocally? And do I have the note or do I not? Um, you always do. <laughs> it's tough. Musical, you know, I mean, I, I think Broadway musicals, eight shows a week is like military and marine boot camp for acting because you just find a way to figure it out so I'm very grateful for that experience and this experience I've had doing musicals because it's trained me to show up and take care of my body which I'm still doing but it does feel very nice <laughs> to be able to just say some words this time and not have to sing no songs <laughs> and dance at the same and time dance and do splits and watch out for you know a floor that's moving it's like maybe I just stand here you know grounded I feel very grounded and that's, and that's, that's and make sure you fun. don't break anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's been very fun and, and nice, if you yes. will. Yeah. And you are wonderful. So I hope you come back to a, to a musical. because <laughs> I, I think I will. I don't think I can hold out too long. Exactly. My knees needed a little break. Yes. So I'll take the break for now. <laughs> I totally understand. Thank you so no much. You Thank you for this yeah. interview. We are here with Paul Bethany, who is going to play the role of Andy Warhol in this new play on Broadway, which is called The Collaboration. And it's about the friendship and collaboration between Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat. It is the best time, I think, to have this play on Broadway since we have here in New York the amazing exhibition of Basquiat. Uh, right now mm -hmm. and it's organized by his two sisters and it's amazing what mm -hmm. they have so congratulations that's Thank you very much. perfect time so tell me about how do you prepare for this role because is this your first time it's gonna be your first time on Broadway um, uh, yeah it's my first time on, on Broadway um, uh, and I, uh, when we did it, the show in London, that was the first time I've been on stage for 25 years. Yeah. So because you're a very well-known theater and TV and film, uh, sorry, film and TV actor. So. So so yeah, it was it was um, it was it was it was a great experience, and I'm really looking forward to bringing this. A particular story uh, to New York, and mm -hmm. it, it, it feels like a homecoming for the for the play. Um, it's a New York story about two New York icons, and I'm um, I, 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 I just I'm very I'm thrilled to uh, we both are Jeremy and I thrilled to bring it uh, home to this public. Uh, what made you accept this role? Well, when my friend Dennis, old friend of mine, Dennis O'Sullivan, who is one of the producers of the, the play and the film, uh, he said, do you want to play Andy Warhol? And I said, absolutely not. No, I don't. Um, I, I think there might be a reason that he is always a, a cameo in, in, in films and plays. And, um, and then he sent me the diaries. And the diaries were, uh, uh, they were, uh, I hadn't realized this, that they were they were sort of dictated, downloaded to Pat Hackett, his, his um, assistant, uh, every morning. And he speaks in these long, circuitous sentences. Uh, and they kind of read more like Truman Capote, frankly, than the sort of monosyllabic, um, carefully curated persona that you think of when you think of anyone. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm... And then I started speaking to some people that knew him, Candice Bergen and um, Anna Winter, and they, they were both saying actually he was quite verbose in, 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 in private, so um, I thought there might be a way in. That's, so that's why I ended up taking the role. 
which is an amazing role, I think. And so what you think, what you're saying is that he was one person in front of the cameras and he created that, like this character? Yeah, I think he was very, you know, very uh, uh, un uncomfortable um, oh. uh, in general, but more so in public. So the preparation you did for this is especially those diaries? Um, I, I, I always, I struggle talking about preparation because um, for one thing it feels, it feels a little bit like showing people, if you're a magician, showing people how you put the rabbit in the hat, you know. Uh, so. How did I prepare? There's, you, you read books, you watch documentaries, you talk to people that knew him, you, but mostly what you do is sort of sit with your thoughts and imagination and, and, and try and work out how that, what frightened that person, mm -hmm. what their dreams were. Uh, and for, for, for me, I guess the conclusion I came to was that um, Andy seems somebody who was so very frightened by the world that mm -hmm. he, through a sort of desperate magic, managed to change the world into seeing him as a star. And when that relevancy is threatened, I think he feels very frightened. Yeah. Which is clear in his in his paintings and in his art because it's the opposite of this. Correct. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel? Hmm? How do you feel? feel Broadway. Oh that's, I'm hugely excited and and just very it was great doing it in London. Mm -hmm. But this is to show it to New Yorkers, uh, you know, an iconic time for New York in the mm -hmm. 80s, and an iconic, two iconic uh, New York characters. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to bring it here. Thank you so much for thank your you. interview, and thank you for doing this. Grazie mille. We are here with Kwame Kweama, who is the artistic director mm -hmm. of the Young Vic in London, yes, indeed. which is an amazing theatre. I used so to live much. in London, so I know. And you have been the second black person who has done a show in the West End in London. So you've broken some frontiers and in some glass. Um, you are now here directing this incredible, incredible play about two iconic figures in New York. Yes. And in the art world of New York. The collaboration between Basquiat mm -hmm. and Andy Warhol. Amen. Two crazy, completely <laughs> different people. Amen. How do you feel and tell me about it? Well, number one, I'm overjoyed to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic about bringing this play to Broadway and being on Broadway. I'm ecstatic about this period of time of being one of many black artists on Broadway at, 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 at the same time. I mean, it's historic and beautiful. And then I'm, I'm overjoyed because the story of these two men um, and their collaboration is one that, that I find can speak to the here and now um, about the power of art to, uh, to, to move not just people but move ourselves to be our best selves. What happens when you put your soul and your spirit on the canvas? What, how, how does it affect you? How does it affect the way you live your life? How does it affect the way that others treat you? And what do you need to do to protect yourself during um, during that process? And I think the play looks at all of those things. It's a bromance. It's about how these men find each other from actually two opposites find commonality in, uh, in the challenge of creating art and looking after their spirits. I heard incredible things about you from the two protagonists, oh, about the way brilliant. you direct. 
How did you decide to come on board with this project? I was sent the script by a London producer called Eleanor Lloyd, a wonderful friend, and, uh, and I started reading it in a taxi, and, uh, and then I got out of the taxi at my destination and did not go into my destination because I couldn't stop reading it. Wow. I was so taken by the idea, I was so taken by the heart, I was so taken by the intelligence, I was so taken by the humour, I was so taken by the exploration of these two men. Um, and once I read it, I said, yes, please. Yes, please. Fantastic. And how long ago was this? Oh, that's... That, to be honest with you, I think that's about 18 months ago. I mean, literally, I read it. Pretty. I said, please, let's do it at the Young Vic. We put it on within within six months of us having read it. And, and then we've done... We did it at the Young Vic, and then we made the movie, and now here we are on Broadway. This is incredible. I mean, in 18 months, you did the show. You decided to do a show, you did the show, you made a movie, and now you're here I'm on Broadway. I mean, it's incredible. And actually, all praises to Anthony McCartan, um, the writer who said, I want to make this into a play, and then I want to make it to movie, and then I want to take it to Broadway. And we all went, okay, let's just build one ship at a time. <laughs> but actually, it, it's become this, 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 excuse the metaphor, but it's become this cruise liner that just <laughs> keeps traveling. So uh, I'm very, 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 Honored and humbled, and and, um, and 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 I want to say nervous, but nervous is the wrong word. I'm excited more than I am, more than I am nervous. Well, obviously, this is a blessed uh, opera, mm. as we say in Italian, mm. because that very rarely happens so quickly. Amen. Usually it takes years, years, to, get years to get on Broadway. Years, years. <laughs> and you did all this. I mean, it, it, it does. It normally, I mean, you know, if you're lucky, it would be five years to make a, to, you know, the play and then Broadway in a movie. I mean, yeah. that would be, but yeah, to do it in 18 months has been a real feat, a real feat. Why do you think it's that? I think it's the enduring admiration, love, fascination and interest in these two characters. Andy and Jean, and Jean and Andy, um, that they touch different communities in different ways um, and fascinate us in a way that I think will, I mean, they change the face of art, um, both in different ways, and we know that, that, and we feel that it will last forever. So it's just wonderful to actually just be jumping into the pond, and in 10 years' time, somebody else will jump into another pond, and, you know, this day will just keep giving. Uh, how does it feel? to walk around New York when, if you have any free time and be immersed in the atmosphere in which they lived. And did you see the exhibition, the Basquiat? I did see the exhibition. I mean, I, 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 I flew in to see it. Um, in fact, we had it opened after we did the first show. So I, like literally, my prize to myself was once we closed was to fly in to, to take a look. Um, it's a brilliant time to be in New York. It's a brilliant time to be in Broadway. I mean, you know, to have so many friends, colleagues, having their work produced here from Death of a Salesman, which we brought over yeah. from the Young Vic, to Top Dog Underdog, mm -hmm. knowing knowing the curators there, to I mean, a literally piano lesson. Mm -hmm. to, I mean, to Audra, to it's like what a time to be on Broadway. Um, I, I I feel very blessed to be part of this way. And uh, La Chance, she is now the producing on Broadway on top of being an actress. Yes. So this is the only the third person on Broadway who's black producing. Mm. And the only other company, the first one, is Front Row Productions. Absolutely. David Bird, Stephen well. Bird yes. and Aliyah. Yes. They are the greatest. They are magnificent. And they are also on yes. the West End. Absolutely. So Absolutely. they were, until now, they were the only one, yes. only produ yeah. black producers, yeah. leading black producers Absolutely. on Broadway. And now, now they have company, yes. which is a beautiful thing, right? Yes. Because uh, it can't rest on the shoulders of only one. Mm -hmm. um, what are your, your vision for this show? I, I, I think the vision is to, to, to find the essence of what was 1980s New York mm -hmm. that, that gave birth 
to the brilliance of these two artists. Andy's, of course, is much older, and, but um, but there was something about the '80s and the way that they both defined it, and and then reproduced them mm -hmm. into the world. That um, that I hope that we capture some of that. Yeah. New York is a character in this play, and uh, and we want to make sure that we that we explore that and capture that. And also, my dream is that people um, look at these two artists um, and enjoy being in the front room with them, because that's what theatre is. You're in the room, yeah. with them. and 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 I'm, I can't wait for people to see the brilliant performance of Paul and Jeremy and and Krista and Eric. I mean, they are they're truly wonderful. Wonderful! I can't wait to see it. How how difficult was it to turn into words uh, a character like uh, Andy Warhol, who very rarely spoke? Well, what we found is a brilliant question. Mm -hmm. Actually, what we found is right up until the Andy Warhol diaries came out mm -hmm. um, this year, is that people's perception of Andy. Rather, Andy had cultivated a perception and everybody bought it right up until the last minute. And then when the diaries came out, we then got to see, oh, he was very verbose. He actually spoke a lot. He woke up in the morning and he dictated to his secretary all of the wonderful things that he did the night before. And, you know, and, and he was bitchy and funny and playful and very verbose. So actually, it, with the Young Vic production, the diaries as a TV series hadn't come out yet, so we were still wrestling with, okay, will people accept this for both Andy? Mm. But actually post that, we all know that actually what Anthony was writing was the Andy that was, the Andy behind the, the construction, the brilliant construction. Um, and so in a way, um, we have freedom to, to kind of, to investigate who these people were through the lens mm -hmm. of a great writer. Um, it's not a documentary, it's, it, it's a piece of art that is, that is dancing with their art. And, and, and that's fun to kind of to help lead or to help curate. A piece of art framing their art. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh, no, my pleasure. Thank you for your passion oh, and God your bless show. You. And thank I can't you. wait to see and this show. And thank you for bringing us to Harlem. Thank you. <laughs> they will love you. We are here with Mr. Anthony McCartan, who is the playwright for this uh, new Broadway show, The Collaboration, which is the story of the friendship and collaboration between Andy Warhol and uh, and uh, oh my God, Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat. There is an exhibition of Jean-Michel Basquiat right now here in New York, and it's an incredible exhibition organized by his two sisters. So this couldn't be a best time for this play to come out on Broadway. How did you get involved in this? Uh, I was, uh, it was 2018, and I was visiting a friend in the Lower East Side of New York, and he said, would you like to come to a uh, exhibition of Jean-Michel Basquiat's work at the Brandt Foundation mm -hmm. in, in Lower East Side? Um, he also had uh, tickets for uh, an Andy Warhol retrospective at the Whitney. Yes. Um, and so on the same day, I saw these two incredible exhibitions, and they were they were such very different artists um, that when I heard that they had collaborated together for for two years in the, in the early 1980s, I thought that's interesting. That really. That really um, sort of speaks to something I've become interested in, which is people who are physical, philosophically divided um, and argue their case and have to find a sort of synthesis. So that, that was the beginning of the work. So you are the one who really thought about this and decided to write about this. They didn't ask you to do that. It was your idea. Yeah, 95% of the time I, I come up with my own ideas because it takes, you, you end up spending so much of your life doing these things that you have to be in love. And if someone, if someone can't advise you to be in love with someone, you have to fall in love. 
And so for me, it's it's I'm very careful about who I choose to, you know, to portray mm -hmm. if it's a biographical story, for example, because you spend a lot of time with this person or these two people in this case, and um, there's a lot of research required to responsibly paint the picture. Yes. And uh, I heard you saying before that. Uh, Andy Warhol wasn't so talkative during his interviews, so you had to research a lot of material. Where did you find that? You, you're understating it if you're saying he wasn't very talkative. <laughs> he, he made it like a life mission to say nothing on yeah. film. In fact, he used to do interviews. He'd appear on talk shows in America and just have someone to speak for him and he'd just sit there. <laughs> I didn't um, know that. Yeah, so he was playing a game, a grand game. But he had a secretary, um, Pat Hackett, and every morning he would phone her and say what he did last night. It mm -hmm. was a terrible gossip. And she recorded it all. And they became the basis of the Andy Warhol diaries. And the Andy revealed in those diaries is very different from the person, the highly curated character he presented in those TV appearances. This was a wonderfully witty, bitchy <laughs> character with views on everything. So that really informed uh, my portrait of Andy. He's, believe me, this is not a play with Andy Warhol just sitting down going, oh gee, oh wow, how great. No, you're going to hear Andy Warhol really on fire. So you are bringing the diaries and all the gossiping onto this play? The quality of the diaries I'm mm -hmm. bringing. I'm not using the diaries. Um, uh, there's a small extract from the diaries in, mm -hmm. the, in, in the play, and we have uh, the partnership of the Warhol Estate in the use of that, those small sections. But essentially, it is my idea of what these two might have said to each other based on research. And how did you research about Basquiat? Because Basquiat is the opposite of Warhol. <laughs> he was very... He's the opposite in many ways, but they, they share in common this frustrating uh, fact that they almost said nothing on film. You know, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of footage of John ever talking about his method. Mm -hmm. um, so it was necessary really to look at his art to yeah. see what he was passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a kind of spiritual quality to, to him. He makes an almost religious claim for what art should be and, and, a, and a very determined political claim for art, which is so contrasting with Andy, who's just saying, like, life is just services now. Everything is a brand. Artists don't mean anything. Artists will cease to exist, and they should cease to exist. John was hearkening back to, to a more... Uh, Engaged. Religious engagement with, with, with what art is, that it can redeem us, that it can transform us, and perhaps even save lives. Yes, yes it did. So is this your first time on Broadway? You are a four-time Oscar nominated, and you have uh, done uh, a bubble by your pictures, very one that I saw fantastic, the yeah. theory of everything and then Bohemian Rhapsody also, and then the two popes. Uh, is this your first time on Broadway? Well, almost, although I have just I have a musical about Neil Diamond, which has just opened uh, in previews. So uh -huh. um, after 60 years of not having anything on Broadway, and, um, <laughs> I've got two at once. So it's a, it's a lovely double debut. Fantastic, fantastic. And what's the difference for you to write about films and to write theater, playwriting for film and playwriting for theater. What's the difference? Yeah, how do you feel about it? They are, they offer different pleasures, different satisfactions. Uh, theater is is more collaborative, mm -hmm. so you do the work, you present the play, but then you have a whole process which you don't have in films, which is you really workshop the play. And you get in a room and you play with it. You really play with the play. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have good actors with good brains and 
storytelling ability. You try things out and you say, what if you said this? What if you go and stand over there? What if, hang on, let's change the intention of the scene. Just see what happens. And you learn so much. And it's a, it's a completely different way of creating. Uh, and it's, and I love both. And sometimes I just love being an autocrat, like you are in film, and just saying, here it is. Don't change a thing. Make it. You know. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. We are here with Mr. Eric Jensen, who's playing the role of Bruno Bishop Berger right. in the collaboration, the new play that will be on Broadway next week about the collaboration between Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat. Mm -hmm. What is your role in this play? Uh, well, Bruno Bischoff Berger is one of the most important art dealers in the 20th and 21st centuries. Mm -hmm. He discovered the discovered the pop art movement, uh, represented people like Warhol and Jasper Johns and the neo-expressionist movements as well with uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, obviously, and then Julian Schnabel, people like that. Um, the, uh, he, he had a world of excitement around him all the time, and mm -hmm. he was the strong center. Uh, to that world so people could come and do their work and express themselves. I just saw the exhibition of Jean-Michel oh. Basquiat here in New York, which has been organized by his two sisters, yes. and it's really complete, it's beautiful. I know, I saw it. I saw it. I spent a lot of time at, uh, at the exhibition here in New York. Um, I, I probably spent 20 minutes in front of each work. Um, yes. You know, uh, Basquiat, seeing a lot of Basquiat all at once was just a transcendent experience. Yes. And so this is a perfect time for this play to be brought to Broadway. I think, I think so. I mean, I think we all need art right now, don't mm -hmm. we? After all the isolation, art connects us. Mm -hmm. It makes us love each other and, and uh, allows us to be mirrors for each other and see each other. And that's, uh, that's one of the coolest things about being part of the collaboration is we have an opportunity to expose that. And uh, I talked to some people who really knew Basquiat very mm. well, and they told me that your character really helped Basquiat a lot. Mm. He really had a big influence. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, you know, the, the, you know, the closest role that I can think of in my life are, are agents and actors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you're, uh, as an agent or, a, or an art dealer, I guess, you're a, a father confessor, you're a, a, a coach, you're, uh, you have to know when to stand back and, and uh, you know, not push. Um, and, uh, you know, encouragement is at the center of this character. And that's, uh, that's the thing that Kwame Kwearma is helping me, uh, the director is helping yes. me do, um, helping me accomplish on stage. And it's just a pleasure to get up there with these, these three actors, Krista and, and uh, Jeremy and Paul, and, and really uh, really lock horns and, and, uh, and make uh, true love come to life on stage. Wonderful. How did you get involved in this? Well, uh, I, Manhattan Theatre Club has been my home for quite a long time, mm -hmm. actually. My very first understudy job was for a Terrence McNally play called Corpus Christi um, back, in the, back in the day. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, you know, I did a lot of theatre work here for a long time until I started writing. And then, uh, and then uh, it's, just, it's really nice to be back home. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank this. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. We are here with Krista Rodriguez, who plays the role of Maya in this beautiful new play coming to Broadway about the friendship and collaboration between Andy Warhol and Basquiat. Tell us, who is Maya? Well, Maya, in our version of the play, is a bit of a combination of different um, relationships that Basquiat had in real life. And um, she, at the time we meet her in the play, is his ex-girlfriend. Is his ex-girlfriend, and she comes in um, looking for him, and he's not there, and so she ends up having a really beautiful scene with um, Paul's character, uh, Andy Warhol, about basically the longing of wishing, you know, we could love and be loved by this beautiful spirit and knowing that that's not ever going to be possible for either of us. Yes. How does it feel to play this role, which as you said combines many people, mm -hmm. we know Madonna was one of them, <laughs> um, with Jeremy Pope, uh -huh. 
And uh, in this iconic moment of the New York art movement, yes. and with these two iconic people. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I keep saying it's icons playing icons, and these two actors are incredible. And, and they've also done this show before, and they filmed it as a movie, so they're really um, completely engulfed in their own characters. And so it's just been a real joy to, to come in and see them fully formed, and it makes us get to sort of um, pull up our game and, and come in fully formed as well. But it's been really fun to play ball with all of them and just um, sort of work off what they have already discovered about themselves, but their the roles are so iconic, and I think what's special about the play is getting to see the more intimate moments between the two of them, the imagined conversations that could have occurred, and, you know, extrapolate the relationship they might have created during that time. What made you decide to take this role? You know, Selfishly, it's my first play on Broadway, so I wanted to Your check debut, that wonderful, box wonderful. My play debut. You know, it'll be my ninth Broadway show, but yes. I'm, I'm excited to um, try something different, especially right now I'm performing in Into the Woods, which is a three-hour-long musical, which is a much different experience than this. So um, so that was something that was appealing to me. Um, I've been you know, in the New York scene for 20 years, and MTC is a stalwart of this mm -hmm. community and a pillar of, you know, um, of generosity and giving back to the community and and putting on exceptional plays. So uh, I was excited to work with them. And then I was able to do a reading of the play and get to see Jeremy and uh, Paul's performance mm -hmm. and really was floored by it. So I just thought, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a small role. It's a small, sort of concentrated but effective mm -hmm. role. And I just was thrilled to be able to be in this orbit. Yeah, wonderful. Tell me about the roles you did before. Which one was more important for you, most? fundamental. Well, it's funny. One of the roles that I that have I've taken with me over the years is Ilsa in Spring Awakening, which I played, I understudied in the original and then I played in the revival. And I keep likening this character a lot to her. She's um, sort of kind of a ghost in the first act mm -hmm. and then comes in the second act with a real energy. You're not, you're not sure in the first act who she's going to be until sort of the lights change and she's on stage and, and kind of comes in, shakes some things up, and, and leaves. So I'm really uh, excited about bringing that new energy and that new um, the sort of shift to yes. play as it's going. You've been watching them mm -hmm. for you know an hour or so at that point, and it's time to time to shake things up. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank um, you. Best wishes. Thank you. Break a leg. Appreciate it. <laughs> tanti tanti auguri per il debutto. Beautiful, con beautiful. Un play. <laughs> a Broadway. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. ciao.